Okay, so we've been doing a lot of setup up to this point, introducing inverse trig functions and you know their domains and their ranges and their graphs and you know how to evaluate them and things like that. But uh, but now it's time to get to the calculus uh, topics in in regards to inverse trig uh, functions, and we're going to look uh, right now at how to take their derivatives. So um, if you want to differentiate one of these inverse trig functions. Uh, you can't just use one of your old trig rules like the derivative of sine was cosine and things like that because these guys aren't technically trigonometric functions uh, they're not periodic they don't you know they're just sine inverse looks similar to sine but it's not sine x and so it's a, a completely different approach to, to take these guys derivatives so um, someone actually had a very good idea to, uh, to help us take this guy's derivative. Because we're much more comfortable dealing with regular trig functions, let's take this guy down here for, for a moment and we'll write y equals sine inverse of x, okay? So um, if you're trying to differentiate sine inverse, that's the same thing as trying to differentiate y. So th this equality holds and you can manipulate this equality however you want to. So let's write it in a different way. Let's write sine of y equals uh, x as opposed to y equals sine inverse of x. Um, these are equivalent, and we've done this for other um, situations before, but it's just due to the fact that we're much more comfortable dealing with, with um, regular trigonometric functions. Okay, so now um, let's differentiate this, and you'll see where we're going with this one once we finish. Um, if you differentiate the left side with respect to x, you'll notice this has a y, so we'll need what's called implicit differentiation. You'll probably remember that from uh, Calc 1 and uh, some time ago. So what we do with implicit differentiation is we differentiate the outside, the derivative of, uh, here, let me jot down that we are taking a derivative so we don't forget. So we're going to differentiate the, uh, the left side. And if I can squeeze it in here, we're going to differentiate the right side as well. Okay, so um, derivative of the uh, the left side. Let's um, try that first. All right, derivative of sine y would be cosine of y, but we're going to follow that with the derivative of the inside, and the derivative of y would be dy dx, right? Something like that. Um, equals and the derivative of x is 1. All right, so um, here's my derivative and here's the derivative of y with respect to x and y, if you recall, was sine inverse. So this is the guy who I'm looking for. So uh, we can say dy dx equals 1 over cosine of y, right? 1 over cosine of y. And uh, we're, we're almost done, but this is a little confusing in the sense that um, I was expecting to get the derivative to be a function of x, not a function of y. So we have a little bit of work to do. So now we, we've done this trick before, but he, here's what we're going to do. We're actually going to create a, a right triangle here. Okay, you might remember doing something similar to this earlier. Okay, so let me jot this down. You'll, you'll see where we're going with this. Okay, so um, what I'm looking at is this uh, relationship right here. Sine of y equals x. Sine of y equals x. So y would be an angle, and the sine of it, the sine of it would be opposite over hypotenuse. You remember those old trig relationships. Um, so you could express x as x over 1. Um, so opposite over hypotenuse, the sine ratio uh, would put an x here and a 1 here, right? And uh, that would make this mystery leg here that's um, not labeled here if you use the Pythagorean theorem, which I'll just kind of speed through that a little bit. This would turn out to be, and you can trust me on this, you can find it yourself, 1 minus x squared. And so um, a squared plus b squared does in fact equal c squared. Okay, so now why did I just do that? Why did I just take time um, out of this problem to stop and, and make up this little triangle here? Well, the derivative of y with respect to x, which is basically the derivative of sine inverse, is 1 over, 1 over cosine of the angle, 1 over cosine of y. 
here's y and so what's cosine of y was well, adjacent over hypotenuse right adjacent over hypotenuse so it's the square root of 1 minus x squared over 1 but we, we don't need to write the over 1 okay and so this little part down here this little part down here that's your cosine of y this in the in the denominator there so um, that's how these work um, we use this nice idea to write it as a regular trig function take a derivative although it did have to be done implicitly we had to use implicit differentiation that was okay and then uh, we used a right triangle to get um, you know our final quantities there so um, this is really the main part of what you need to know I know that was a long discussion but um, this is what what you need to memorize I, I, for these sections I highly recommend flashcards um, just to put each of these derivatives on a flashcard and, uh, and just go through them one at a time all right let's speed up a little bit uh, we're gonna do the derivative for cosine inverse we're gonna do this a little faster uh, we know the drill now we'll write y equals cosine inverse of x so cosine of y equals x we're going to take the derivative of both sides the derivative of x is just one and the derivative of cosine would be negative sine y times dy dx again implicit differentiation so dy dx would be negative one over sine of y if we take the sine y and divide it to the right hand side okay now now what is sine of y though well again we need a, a right triangle real quick so make us up a little right triangle okay so uh let's see we'll put our angle here um, i'm looking at this relationship cosine of y equals x so cosine of this angle would be x also called x over 1 so cosine ratio is adjacent over hypotenuse adjacent over hypotenuse that would make this um, unknown leg right here the square root of 1 minus x squared <clears throat> now in case you're curious uh, I did this kind of quickly where, where did that come from how, how did how did I know that so quickly well all I did was if you call this mystery side we'll call it a all I did was I said a squared plus x squared equals 1 squared you know I just used the Pythagorean theorem solve for a and a would be the square root of 1 minus x squared the plus or minus is not necessary um, these are, are going to be positive values here so um, so we we'll just use the positive square root 1 minus x squared but um but in any case um, I can now see what sine of y would be opposite over hypotenuse and I'll substitute it in right here and final answer 1 over the square root of 1 minus x squared so this is interesting uh, you see the derivatives for sine inverse and cosine inverse are the exact same thing with one subtle difference what what's the what's the subtle difference um, this guy has a negative where the original one uh, was positive so that that was the the difference here this was positive one and um, derivative for cosine inverse was negative one all right one more to do real quick um, derivative of tan inverse let's do this one the same way we'll have y equals tan inverse of x so tan of y equals x derivative for tangent is secant squared y uh, derivative of x is 1 uh, and uh, forgive me I forgot my dy dx in here from implicit differentiation so dy dx equals 1 over secant squared y now this one's an interesting one though uh, you look at this and you say well Oh, how are we going to make a right triangle relationship out of that? That would be awfully ugly. Well, I've got a, a slicker way of, of doing this. If you recall, there was a trig identity for secant squared. Uh, in fact, secant squared was the same as 1 plus tan squared. And so I'm going to replace secant squared y with 1 plus tan squared y. Now, why, why would I do that? 
Well, if you look right here, let me use a, a slick little trick right here. Look at this, tan y equals x. And so if you want to write this expression back in terms of x, I know what tan y is, tan y is x. So what's tan squared y? It'd just be x squared. So our final answer would be one over one plus, not tan y squared, but just x squared. And so this would be your derivative for tan inverse. Okay, so there's your three big ones. We have the derivative for arc sine, we have the derivative for arc cosine, and we have the derivative for arc tangent, and we've even derived all three of these. So I know it took a while, but I appreciate you being patient with me. Um, I'm not going to take the time to, de to derive the last three, the derivatives for arc secant, cosecant, and cotangent. Notice they look somewhat similar to your, your other guys. Um, they can easily be done the exact same way that I did the first three. I just don't think I want to take the time to derive all three of these. But one thing I, I can't stress enough is the use of flashcards in, uh, in this particular entire chapter for that matter. There's lots of memorization that has to be done. What we're doing, in case you haven't kind of gotten the big picture here, is we're exposing you um, to new types of functions. Sure, earlier in the calculus course we learned you know, you know, how to take derivatives of polynomials and exponential functions, but we didn't learn any of these new functions like inverse trig derivatives and, and some, some of these other things and hyperbolic functions that will be coming up soon. So we're just exposing you to new types of functions and you know how to take their derivatives. So it's so much information. Uh, really the, the best way to do it is just make you up some flashcards and just repeat them over and over again because it's one of those things students they take for granted and uh, oftentimes they get burned in a test because you'll have you know the derivative of you know, arc cosecant, and if you don't know it, you don't know it, and you can't do any problems that had a inverse cosecant function, you know, if you're asked to take the derivative, if, uh, if you don't have this memorized. So um, anyways, uh, you know, take, take that information to heart, and um, uh, next we'll move on. Uh, we'll be looking at some hyperbolic functions coming up soon. So uh, anyways, ho hopefully that helps you understand uh, inverse trig derivatives uh, a little bit better.